Hi, I'm Holly. I'm from Teach All About It. And today we're going to be doing some daily practice for revision. Today we're going to be looking at an exam question and an example student answer for the IGCSE Computer Science Syllabus from Cambridge. So in today's question, we're going to be looking at Boolean logic. Now you can see here we have a question that says, consider the following logic statement. Now we've got a logic statement underneath and you'll see that the inputs are bold. And I'm just going to highlight those for you. So we can see here we've got A, we've got B, and we've also got B appearing again, and then we've got C and C appearing again. Now you're going to be asked to draw a logic circuit to represent whatever this particular given logic statement is. And you've also been asked not to attempt to simplify the logic statement, simply state exactly how you can see it. Now what I'd like you to do is to pause the video so that you can try this first, and then I'm going to show you a student's answer and one of my own. So let's have a look at this particular student's answer. So you can see here that they have been given a box to actually write in. Um, and our inputs are all shown on the left hand side as A, B and C. So this particular student has absolutely got 100% on this answer. And I can see that they have been identifying what the gates actually do. Now, this is an unusual piece of, um, it's an unusual answer in as much as they have annotated their understanding of the gate. So you can see here that what they've done is they have talked about um, a, an OR gate, they've talked about an AND gate and an XOR as well. So one of the things that I could see here when marking this answer is that they have decomposed this particular logic circuit into smaller chunks. And that makes it easier to understand. It also makes it easier to create. Now, one of the things that you want to do when you see this kind of logic statement, especially when you have something quite large, is to do this left to right in terms of the logic statement is going to be top to bottom when you're actually drawing the diagram. So what you're going to get here is one mark per correct logic gate. So this was a five mark answer, five correct logic gates, and you're absolutely there. So let's move on. And what I'll do is I'll show you how I would break this down into smaller and more manageable chunks. OK, so we've been asked to draw a logic circuit to represent this particular logic statement. Now, this particular logic statement is giving this to us as a logic statement, not as Boolean algebra. Now, as Boolean algebra, this would be represented in a slightly different way. And I will go into that in a separate video. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color code them. So I'm going to put a little line under A or B. And if you think about things like bid mass or bod mass, depending on how you do it, you're looking for brackets first. So the inside brackets are the ones that we really want to look for. So A or B is inside its own pair of brackets. B, X or C is going to be in its own pair of brackets. And actually, this is then a not of the whole thing. So let's give that another mark here. So here we've then got a and not B, X or C. Now you can see here that the blue is encompassing the green because it needs to be then going into both. Then we have a number of sets of brackets. Now not, so let's have a look at this one here. So here I've got a an open bracket here, an open brackets for the B, X or C, which closes there, which means that the closing brackets for the not have to go here. Now, if I do the same for the A and B, I've got opening here and then another opening here, A or B closes. That means that the next closing that I can get to is this one, which means the whole of this section is going to then be put together. Now that means the AND C 
is sort of on its own. It's all of this. Oh, let's just change that color. There we go. All of this and C. Now this is called scope. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw out my, uh, my logic gate um, and my logic diagram using those colors so you can see how they relate. So we knew that we had one, two, three inputs. We've got A, we've got B, and we've got C, and we're trying to get to a final output over here, which is X. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the nice easy one first. We've got A or B. Now I'm going to draw my little rocket here. An OR gate looks like a rocket. And A is going to go into it. And then so is B. So you can see there that's color coded with my red. I'm then going to do the B, X or C. Now B, X or C then needs to go into a NOT gate. So we're going to do the green first. So B, X or C. So the X or looks like a rocket. Let's put that back here. But it has a tail. So it has like a double rocket. And then because B is coming off into this one and also the other OR gate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dot and show that that is coming off this way. And then C can go in like that. So remember, two inputs, one output. So that little dot just shows that it's going off in two directions. Now, because I've then got a NOT gate that's having to go out of this one, I'm going to draw my NOT gate in blue. Make sure that's in blue. There is my knot with its nose. One input into a knot gate. It's the only gate that has one input and one output. So that is my blue section. Now what I can then do for the orange is say, well, actually the only thing that I need to do in order to connect these bracketed sections is this gate here. It's just simply connecting both sides with an OR gate. So here I'm going to draw another rocket. In it goes. And then finally I then got an AND C. So I'm going to get my purple there, draw my AND gate. Now this is an interesting one because here I need to have two inputs. So there is my semicircle for my AND gate. The first thing that goes in is all of this stuff up here. And then I need to have AND a C. So I'm going to pop in another dot here to show that that is being then going into two different places. It's going into the XOR, but it's also going to come all the way down here and up into the AND gate and that AND is the last thing we needed to do because it's the last bracket and that goes into the X. Now this is and it does look like a complex answer and that's why you get five marks for something like this. So you're really looking at trying to chunk it down. Remember decomposition is one of our computational thinking terms. So you can apply computational thinking to almost everything that you do in these answers. So would you like your question featured on here? If you've been studying and you have a past paper question that you'd like me to answer and give some examiner style feedback, you can go to www.teachallaboutit.school and you can submit your GCSE, IGCSE or A-level computer science questions for free.